Good morning, YouTube. It's an exciting day. Check this out. The M4 and the F1 from Strange Science Instruments. We have been working on these modules on nights and weekends for close to two years now. And this is a very exciting day because they're finally done. They're finally shipping. And uh, people are using them to make music. And that's very exciting. So for this episode, what I wanted to do is actually back up and see how these things get manufactured. Like how do we go from an idea in someone's head to a manufactured product that is tested and, and ready to go? So, in my opinion, good product design always starts with a set of questions. In my case, I went around and chatted with a lot of musicians, and particularly people with modular synths that I know. And we started talking and we realized there's, a, there's an interesting question in that why are modular synths almost always mono? What, why can't they be stereo? Why can't they maintain all that nice uh, phase and uh, pan information. Once I had this question, I started mulling it over. Like, what kind of product do we need? Uh, how big is it? How much should it cost? Uh, what kind of features should it have? How high performance should it be? And so on and so forth. And that's when I approached my brother, who happens to be an electrical engineer. And he thought it was an interesting idea also. So the next thing that he did was he took out one of these. This is a breadboard and he started making some prototypes of a stereo mixer and a stereo filter. And eventually you end up looking like something like this, right? You've got a breadboard, it's stuffed full of components, and it's temporary, it's a quick and dirty prototype, but you establish that the idea is good, that, that this is something that's actually going to work, right? And so then the next step is you put the breadboard aside and you take one of these. This is a prototyping board. It's a lot like a breadboard except you actually put the components in and solder them onto the surface of the board. And that way you can have something that is a little bit more sturdy and a little bit more robust. Something that looks like this. Right, so all the parts are soldered on here. This thing is more robust so you can actually ship this. You can put this in a box and ship it to uh, potential customers, you can send it off to a dealer, you can send it off to friends, you can send it off to your mom. If she's, you know, into modular synth stuff, she can uh, play with it and then give you feedback. And that's a very important idea to get across in that you need to iterate and make sure that the product is just getting better and better and better. You don't go from a breadboard to a finished product like this in one step. It, it doesn't work that way. It usually doesn't work that way. Usually you need to build something like this and keep tweaking it and keep getting people's feedback until you start to feel confident about your design. Now sometimes you end up with a situation like this. This is a prototype that we actually built for our mixer product. This is the original M4 mixer prototype. Right, so these were the channel cards, and this was the main board, and this plugs into here. And this is the original version of this. Except in this case, this didn't work so great. This didn't sound good, we weren't really happy with the results, and this is a great thing that happened, because we, we built a quick prototype. We didn't really like the, the results, and we decided to go back to the drawing board and figure out a different way of building this product. If we'd continued down this path without actually doing this quick and dirty test, well, we would have ended up with a product in the end that we weren't proud of, and we didn't want that. So it's a good thing to do these tests and make sure that you're happy before you go to the next step. So once you have finished doing these tests and you're happy, then you go to the computer and you use a piece of software for PCB design and layout. And once we have the circuit board for this laid out in the computer, we send those files off to a place in California. We work with US-based businesses whenever we possibly can. We're a US-based company and 
we like to work with US-based businesses whenever possible. So we sent off our files to a PCB manufacturing place in California, and they send us back something like this. Right. This is a bare PCB, and this is a thing to behold. This is a beautiful thing. It's layers of laminated fiberglass with these copper traces on top, and these pads contain all the parts that you're going to need to make the circuit work. And you can populate this by hand. If you are very patient and you have a fine soldering iron, you can actually take the parts with tweezers, put them on here, and then use the soldering iron. And just get in there and one by one populate every single component. And that is actually what we do for prototypes. We build a lot of prototypes this way to make sure that the thing works and it sounds good and it does what we want. But eventually, you're gonna need to go into production mode and nobody wants to sit around making these by hand. That is an error prone process and when you work that way, each product is gonna end up costing thousands of dollars because of all the time that you have to put into making these things. So we don't do that. Instead, we take all of these and all the components that are gonna go on here and we ship both of those off to a PCB manufacturing house. Okay, and this is a company that has these giant machines that put all the parts on here. And that's kind of a cool process, so let me walk you through it. The first thing that they do is they take your PCB file and they cut a stencil, right? So this is a thin piece of steel and it is laser cut with extremely high precision so that once you lay this stencil on top of the PCB that you've built, you should get exactly the pads being shown and nothing else. Okay, so you're basically covering everything other than the pads. Now, this is very cool because most people think of solder as looking something like this, right? Most people think this is, this is solder, but solder doesn't have to come in this form. Solder can actually be like this. This is a, a very small tub of solder paste. And if you look inside, it looks a little something like this, right? It's just like a paste and it is solder. I mean, it's basically powdered solder that is mixed with flux and, um, and it turns into a paste. And what you can do is smear some of that on the stencil that you're gonna use and then you use a uh, scraping device to just scrape the solder onto the pads like that. And once you've done that, then you've got this giant machine called the pick and place machine. And all your components that come in, like these are the capacitors, they come on these strips that you feed into this great big giant machine. And these things come on these reels that are about this big and they can hold about 2000 components. And so the machine basically pushes through, the head comes in and with a little vacuum tip, picks up exactly one of these parts, rotates it so it's in the right orientation and goes and plops it down onto the circuit board with extremely high precision. And it's doing tens of thousands of these placements every hour. So these are very quick machines that are constantly pulling parts and putting them onto the, uh, onto the surface of your, of your board. And it's a very mesmerizing process to watch. So if you ever get a chance to see one of these machines or even just look up how they work on YouTube, it's, it's really fascinating to see. So at this point, you've got a board with solder paste applied to it and parts on top of the paste. But the parts are being held in place by the paste, but they're not actually soldered onto the board. The next step is you have to take these and very carefully put them into what's known as a reflow oven. Reflow oven is an industrial pizza oven, basically. It's a, it's a conveyor belt that moves your product through a oven that is very carefully controlled by computer. So the temperatures are very precise and each solder has a specific reflow profile, right? So it says at this time, the temperature needs to be this. And at this time, you need to spike the temperature and then bring it back down gently to this other temperature. And you can program all those things in so that the oven raises and lowers the temperature exactly right so that the parts 
bake onto the surface of this thing and become permanent, right? And once you've done that, you end up with something like this. This is what we get back from the, from the board house. And this is gonna start looking more like a product, right? So this is what actually comes back from the board house. So it's the bare board, and here's the board with all the parts that have been placed on there by that pick and place machine, and then this whole thing runs through that reflow oven to get the parts soldered on there, okay? Now you'll notice that all of these components are still not populated, right? If you look here, there's these potentiometers and there's the main control volume here and none of these things are actually placed into, in the board. That's because we do that by hand. Actually, all the parts that are through hole, we get these boards back and then we manually go through and do every single one of these, these solder joints for the for the physical components, the non-surface mount components. This way, we put on the parts ourselves and then we can do the calibration and testing in-house. Now, at the same time that we send off the order to get the PCB manufacturing started, we send off a file to a company in Berlin that manufactures our front panels for us. Okay, so this company also has offices in the US and we're planning to work with with that office in the future because we like working with US-based companies. So this is basically an aluminum front panel. It's milled. All the holes are actually precision CNC'd onto the surface of the panel. There's no stamping. And if you look closely, you'll notice that the text and the red lines are actually milled into the surface of the panel, right? There's no silk screen here. It's kind of hard to tell, but actually the white text is also milled onto the surface using a 0.2 millimeter engraving mill. And the advantage of this is that once you mill it and infill the ink, this will not wipe off. Unlike silkscreen, this is actually quite permanent and we like that. We want these machines to be in, in use for many years and by having the text actually milled onto the surface, it's, it's much more durable and much more robust. The surface is black anodized and it's very tough anodized. And once all this is done, we get these boards back and then we marry it up with the, with the front panel like this. All right. And at that point, it's on to testing and calibration. So every one of these units has a number of these very small calibration pots right? Little calibration trim potentiometers here and here. The filters have them as well. If you look on the back, there's trim pots here and here and also through this hole. Um, there's a trim pot down there that adjusts for a number of different things. And this is a very complicated and time consuming process, but we have to go through and trim every single one of these so that it's perfect when it leaves the factory. And once that's done, we're in the home stretch. We take the product and then we use some IPA, not the beer, but the, but the alcohol, right? So we use this to clean everything down to make sure that there's no fingerprints on the, on the front panels, that everything looks nice and clean, um, no fingerprints on the back, everything is looking good. Then we put these into ESD plastic bags to make sure that the products don't get zapped with electricity while they're in transport. Then we put it in a nice white box and ship it off to dealers and customers around the world. So that's pretty much the entire process of how we go from an idea to a finished product. Uh, there's a lot of headaches along the way. You have to get certifications. You have to find parts that suddenly get end of life. Then there's all kinds of headaches involving manufacturing and weird clicks and pops that you have to resolve and many other issues. But the process is generally like the one that I just described. At least for us, I don't know how other people do this, but this is how we went through that process. And we're very proud of the results. Uh, I'm gonna make more videos showing off the actual products in use, but I thought it'd be fun to share how, how this happens. Like, I, I think that the back of the module is just as interesting and just as beautiful as the front of the module. And um, if you're interested, maybe in future videos I can talk about the specific circuits and why they are laid out the way they are and what kind of components that we used and why they matter. 
So uh, if you like this, uh, please go ahead and click the like button. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this little walkthrough of the manufacturing process of our products. And uh, thanks. I will see you in the next one.